Did you know God keeps his promises and God has specific promises for you? Stay tuned. Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terrades. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. My name is Ashley Terrades and this is my wife Carly. And we're so glad you've joined us today on the program, praise God. We're talking about possessing the promises. Possessing the promises that God has for you. God has promises for you, specific promises, praise God. And we're looking at practical ways that we can possess those promises. Amen? Yeah. yeah. So last time we started off talking about how God is faithful, that He's faithful to keep His word, that He's not like maybe other people in our life that have have said something and promised us something but not been able to deliver. Or He's not even like us. Sometimes we say things and we don't follow through, yeah. right? Sometimes, you know, sometimes people don't keep their promises. Mm -hmm. But God keeps His promises. Yeah. So we was looking at last time how God is a promise keeper. God keeps His promises. Praise God. We looked at the analogy of, of uh, a promise being like a, the, the difference between a wedding ring uh, and a an marriage engagement ring, ring. An engagement ring and a wedding, and a wedding ring. ring. We talked yep. about the, the, uh, the better covenant. Right. Uh, we talked about so how... So we, we now have a better covenant based on better promises. And uh, you know, once, once, ladies, once that you are uh, married, no longer do you want to be engaged because marriage is a better, is a better covenant. Hopefully. <laughs> Amen. Hopefully marriage Amen. is a better and it super, it supersedes engagement. Amen. And yeah. so the, there are benefits of a marriage type relationship, of a wedding day, mm -hmm. than what we don't have just by being engaged. You know, when I, when I was engaged to Ashley, I didn't get to have his name. I didn't get to have access to his bank account. When I got married, I got his name, I got his bank account. And it wasn't that impressive. And it because wasn't much in it, but when anyway. When we got married, we were very young. We were 18, 19 years old, didn't have much money. So, yeah, it wasn't very impressive, right. but you still could go to the bank. Yes. If you wanted to, you could go to the bank with my name and take my $5 out. Yes, yeah, so a whole and $5 keep and keep all of it. I could spend all of it if I wanted to. <laughs> Right, so I'd, I had your name. I had, you know, I had a new identity. Mm -hmm. I, I now I was Mrs. Terrades. I wasn't Carly Dupree anymore. In fact, right? I remember on our wedding day, uh, I was a youth pastor at the time, and one of my youth group came up to me afterwards. It was so sweet. I know he was maybe 13 years old, 14 years old. I said, "So Ashley, how does it feel to be Mr. Terrades?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, it's great, thank you. Anyway, yeah. But you changed your name, obviously. Yeah. And um, you became, we became one, right? One flesh, mm -hmm. and we lived together. We were able to, to experience a much better, you know, a bond and union together yeah. than when we were engaged. And just, and just like the new covenant that we live in as believers today, because Jesus changed everything, you understand that? In the Old Testament, they had a covenant, they had an agreement with God themselves, but it was nowhere near as good as the covenant that we have now because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, we can have an intimate relationship with God, like in a marriage that they couldn't actually have in the Old Testament. That was a, that was a picture of things to come. But even in the Old Testament, I want to get to today that God not only is He not only is He a promise keeper, He is faithful to His word. Amen. And so the words that He gave, that He sent in the Old Testament. They're still good today. Amen. We, we, they still apply to us. All of the blessings that were given, the promises that were given to people in the Old Testament are still ours today and some, right? Because God's word doesn't return void, right? You have that scripture, don't you? In Amen. Isaiah 50, 55. Well, first of all, I was going to say, this is the scripture that last time we looked at, that all the promises of God are in Him, yes, and in mm -hmm. Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. And that was uh, 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20, 2 Corinthians 1, 20, and that's one of the themes of this, this teaching, the mm -hmm. fact that all the promises of God are yes and amen. And then the scripture you wanted to look at was uh, Isaiah 55, 11. Yeah. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word, this is God speaking, so shall my word be that goes full from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. Praise God. That's powerful. God's mm. saying His word out of His mouth will not return to Him void. It's going to prosper and accomplish the very thing that He planned for it. And He's put His words in our mouth. Amen. Right? To tear down, to build up. This is what it talks about that in Isaiah as well. And so God will always pursue His word. When He releases words, I mean, He releases power. And he is true. He's never, he's, when he releases words, he's going to chase after that word. He's not going to let it fall to the ground. You know, I think it's Hebrews, um, let me just look this up. I think it's Hebrews uh, 1 verse 3 that he is, the, uh, he is the brightness of his glory and express image of himself and upholds all things by the word of his power. Mm. He upholds all things by the word of his power. You know, when, when God created the world, 
He, he did it with words. Amen. Yep. He spoke words. That's how powerful a word of God is when it's spoken to us either through the word of God, the written word of God, whether it's spoken to us on the inside by revelation of the Holy Spirit, whether it's spoken to us by, by a, gift, a gift of the Spirit. You know, whatever it is, when God speaks to us, maybe in a still small voice, maybe in an audible voice, when God speaks his word to us, we can take it to the bank. Not only is he faithful and he never breaks his promise, but he magnifies his word even above his name. Amen. He places a lot of value. That's like his power of attorney, Amen. right? I mean, he, he's serious about it. I want to look here in the Old Testament. You know, we've been talking about covenants and we've been comparing different types of covenant. We've got a, an, an old covenant, a new covenant. We've got a marriage type covenant, an engagement type covenant. Well, God made a covenant, in other words, an agreement, what we'd get the word contract, an agreement, a binding mm -hmm. contract with Abraham and the Old Testament. Now, for a contract to work, there has to be agreement on both sides. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? This is a relationship. God uses the word covenant. and He's talking about having relationship. So let's look here in Genesis um, 17, verse 1. It says, When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you and me and will exceedingly multiply you. Now remember, he's saying he's making an agreement, he's making a covenant, a promise, a word to Abraham. And in that time, they didn't have any children. Right. Abraham fact, and Sarah didn't Abraham. have any children. Abraham and Sarah it, did not have any children. It was Abraham then because mm -hmm. he wasn't a father yet. So it was Abraham right. and then His the, name the hadn't other bit changed was added yet. on. Yeah. Exactly. He says in verse 3, Abraham fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, my covenant is with you and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer, and this is where you're getting to, no longer will your name be Abraham, but your name will be Abraham. That means God with Abraham, right? God with Abraham. Like when, when, when I married Ashley, I became Carly with Ashley. I became Carly Terridez. Most of the time people think right? you're Ashley anyway because, because, because of the, you've got a the girl's, girl's name. name. I know. But, I know, but anyway. Anyway, so he says, your name will be Abraham, okay? God with Abraham. For I have made you the father of a multitude of nations and I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. Now, this is going to be blowing his mind because he knows his wife's like up there in years and she's barren. Well, they're both in their 90s. I they're mean, well past it. Nothing's going on there. Abraham's 99. I'm just saying, right? Don't shut, go, shut. Anyway, we don't, we don't need verse explanations. Seven. They're both elderly. And it, yes. This promise, the best way to say it is this promise in the natural seemed impossible. It seemed impossible. Well, in the natural was impossible. So verse 7 says, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant. You know what this means? Everything that God promised to Abraham, we have today. Because right. God doesn't expire his word. There's no expiration date on the word of God. Everything that he promised to Abraham, we're part of that everlasting covenant. And to be God to you and your descendants after you as an everlasting, it says, I will give to you and your descendants an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Now, the, the fascinating thing about this is obviously Abraham and Sarah, they didn't, have, they didn't have any children. So they had to take it by faith, what God had said to them. And, you know, I think sometimes we look around at the promises, God, maybe we read the promises of God here and we think, I just don't know how they can be true because I don't see them. So I don't see how they could come to pass. Yeah, in the natural circumstances, they look impossible. And how many of you know, God is the God of impossible. I mean, he, mm -hmm. can, he can do the impossible, praise God. So in the natural, they may look impossible. But you know, if God has promised it, if God has given you a promise, you can stand on it. If you apply your faith, if you believe that promise, you can see it come to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham had to believe what God told him to see it come to pass. Him and, him and Sarah had to actually uh, get involved in the situation. You know, there's, <laughs> there's only been one immaculate conception. It wasn't that. And that was, that was uh, Jesus mm -hmm. through the Virgin Mary. This is, this is, they had to put action to their faith, if you like. And, you know, so the, if Ab Abraham said, well, that's not going to happen. It's impossible. Um, you know, we're in our 90s. It's not going to happen. Then he wouldn't have seen that promise come to pass. Right. He had to, he had to take it by faith. Yep. But then there was a response. You know, we mentioned last time that we don't just get saved automatically. There are promises of God. Mm -hmm. There's a promise of God for salvation. There's a promise of God for healing. There's a promise of God for you for prosperity, for deliverance, mm -hmm. for forgiveness, for all of these things, for freedom in every area of your life. But you didn't just wake up one morning and find yourself saved. Right. You didn't just wake up one morning, find yourself healed or prosperous or anything else. Even though a promise has been provided, we still have to take possession of it. 
And this is really important. Yep. God's promises are yes and amen, but we add the amen to his yes. Amen. We have yep. to place agreement on that. That is what's called putting faith in the promises of God that grace has provided. You know, God provided everything for us. Jesus paid for everything. Amen. God provided it, Jesus paid for it. It's a good deal. But when we get to inherit that, all of those blessings that were spoken over Abraham are ours. But they're not yep. just going to come to pass automatically, are they? This is um, Galatians. I like mm -hmm. how it puts it in Galatians. Galatians 3.13. Galatians mm -hmm. 3.13 puts it this way. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. That is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham mm -hmm. might come upon the Gentiles, as us, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Mm. You know, Jesus paid for all these things. Jesus, Jesus paid so that we could receive these promises. He became sin, he became sickness, he became poor so that we could receive the promises of righteousness, of health and healing, of prosperity and increase. He actually paid the price for those things. He, yeah. took, he, had, he, was, he had anxiety mm -hmm. so we could have peace. Yeah. And that's the gospel. And now it's our job to actually just say yes and believe it and put our faith yeah. to it. Yeah. So we're not making God do anything. God already made up his mind. He's already provided all these things, all these promises. But our part is to believe them and James 2 says, you know, faith without works or faith without corresponding actions mm. is dead. What, what James is saying there really is if we really believe these promises, if we believe what God is saying to us is true, we're going to act on it. Yeah. We're going to put some faith towards it. We're going to act on it and have some action to our faith. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So we're not making God do anything. He's already decided. He already decided he loves you. He's already decided that he's, going to, he's provided all this stuff for you. You just have to be the person that says, yes, I believe it and I'm going to receive it. Amen. Amen. That's good stuff. Now, there is a, there's a scripture that many of you will be familiar with in John um, 3.16. John 3.16. John 3.16. I wonder what that says. That's the, I that's wonder your, what that's that your, says. But before we get there, I want to back up a little bit here, okay? Because the Word of God has always been true. It's always Amen. been yes, and it's always been for you. Now, it wasn't always available to everybody, mm -hmm. okay? And to, because of, because of you know, living in a fallen world and living under an old covenant. But now under the new covenant, it's available to every single one of us. Amen? If we choose it. If we choose it. God, see, God has always been a giver. Amen. And there are many promises that are in the Word of God that are for us. Now, we know John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that ever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Right? But So God's always been a giver. Mm -hmm. and, and when we're talking about believing in Jesus, we're talking about putting our faith in what He's already done. Amen. Because He loves us, He pursues His Word. Because he loves us, he's faithful. He's a promise keeper. Back up here a minute. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son, this is in verse 14, so must the son of man be lifted up so that ever believes in him will not perish but may have eternal life. You see, when God, I mean, in our life particularly, the promise of healing was one that was, that's become very real to us. Yeah is part of the promise of God, one of, just one of the many promises, and there are many, many promises, yeah. that Jesus paid the price for us to have. You know, in Psalm 107 verse 20, it says, I sent my word and healed them. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. He didn't send the doctor and heal them, or the bank manager, or the centurion. He sent his word and healed us. And when we heard that, when we were going through some challenges in our family, in our own physical body, you know, it's almost like we were hearing it for the first time. Yeah. We knew that God loved us for God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. But we didn't understand about this promise of healing because what we were doing was we were looking at our own life and seeing a lack of healing. And our own experience. And our so own this experience. what happens sometimes. You look at experience and say, well, you know, so-and-so prayed for God to be healed and they weren't healed. Therefore, it can't be God's promise every time. It just mm -hmm. must be now and again. And I think sometimes we discount ourselves from the promises of God because we, we do. We look around us. We, mm -hmm. we measure our experience up to the Word of God and think, hmm, well, that doesn't compute. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, my experience can't lie to me, surely, because I'm experiencing it. So therefore, the, the Word of God must be misinterpreted. Maybe it doesn't apply to me. Maybe God's changed His mind. Maybe, uh, maybe they've expired. Maybe the promises aren't good. Maybe, you know, I haven't earned them. Somehow we start to place, if we're not careful, conditions upon the Word of God, upon the promises of God, and to whether or not we actually discount ourselves from receiving them. Mm. And I think that's because um, oftentimes we just don't necessarily know the promises are still good. Right. We don't know that God's a good God. 
Yeah, if you haven't been told that, you know, faith comes right. by hearing mm -hmm. and hearing by the word of God. So if no one's told you that, if you, you've never learned that God is a good God. So in our situ in a particular situation, Kylie was talking about, was when our daughter was healed. This is one example. Mm -hmm. We never knew it was God's will to heal mm -hmm. every time. That's God's will. Now, we don't see it every time because we have a part to play and there's other factors involved. But it doesn't stop the fact being that it's God's will for every person to be healed, just like right. it's God's will for every person to be born again, even right. though it, they're not, because mm -hmm. it's their choice. Mm -hmm. So until we understood that it was God's will for, for every person, you know, it was, it was God's will for our daughter, then we could start putting faith behind that, right. because now we knew the truth. Right. And I think first thing is you have to know the promises of God. You have to read the Word. You have to you have to listen to good teachings. You know, shameless plug for Abundant Life program here. But <laughs> our Abundant Life program, we're going to be teaching you the promises of God. And you can go back and watch other episodes. They're all on our website, terradesministries.com. But listen to these teachings. Watch these teachings because they're going to reveal to you the promises of God. God's will for you mm -hmm. are these promises. And until someone tells you about these promises, until you hear them for yourself, until you read them in the Word yourself, you can't believe them. Right. You can't believe it's something you never heard of. Right. You you won't be able to receive something that you're ignorant of, that you just mm -hmm. don't have any understanding or knowledge of. So we, we might have seen that scripture, Psalm 170, 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed us, but because we didn't see it in our own life, we mm -hmm. kind of discounted ourselves from it. But I want to show you in the word of God that healing just being one of the promises of God was always God's idea. It's a promise for you today. Yeah. You, can, well, you can receive it. You can respond to it. And you can see it manifest in your life. And so when it says here in John 3, 14, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up so that whoever may, believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You know, this is referring to a time in Numbers, actually. In Numbers, there was an instance in Numbers 21, verse 8 and 9. I don't know if you want to look that up. Numbers 21, verse 8 and 9. Where the, where the children of, of, of Israel were, were, were disobedient, basically. They were going off and snakes were biting them. Mm -hmm. And people were dying and they were right. perishing. But even then, God provided for them a, a way out, a way of healing was for them. Healing was yeah. even in the Old Testament. Have you Amen. got that? Yeah, this is a Numbers um, 21. 21 verse 8. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when they look at it, shall live. So Ma Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when they looked at the bronze serpent, they lived. So mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know how this looked like. It put it on a pole exactly. and lift it up and so you know what? could see it. You know what I'm thinking? They crucified that serpent. This, you know, in, yeah. the, in the Old Testament, there's what we call um, types and shadows. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pictorial things in the Old Testament that were showing us things to come in the New Testament. Right. And so this was almost like, this was a picture of the crucifixion of Jesus. They crucified a serpent. Right. They crucified the snake. And as they, put, as they looked at that bronze and serpent, they put faith in the Jesus who was to come, who was to be the payment for their healing. Actually, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. You know, ev everyone has only ever been saved through Jesus. Jesus right. is the only Savior, the only way to be saved. Jesus is the only way to the Father. Amen. So anyone who was ever saved, if you like, and we're not going to get into all these different, you know, different uh, things going on here because there's a lot more to it, but just simply put, anyone who is saved in the Old Testament or anyone, let me put it this way, anyone who turns up in heaven, when you get to heaven, there's anyone in heaven mm -hmm. before Jesus, that was, they got saved by trusting in Jesus to come. They mm -hmm. got saved by trusting in Jesus. They didn't know Jesus then. They didn't know about the cross, but God gave them pictures. And God gave, that's mm -hmm. why the animal sacrifices and all things like that, that was all about putting your trust in Jesus to come. Everyone who gets saved now is putting their trust in Jesus that was, mm -hmm. praise God. But there was, there was never another way of salvation. Mm -hmm. It was always through Jesus. And this is another one of those pictures that, that God gave the people so they could put their trust in, in Jesus to come, praise God, and, this and is why find Jesus a way says, of salvation. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Jesus is the way, the only way. Yeah. Amen. So healing and salvation were you know, healing and um, and the promises of God were available in the Old Testament, and they're still available today. Amen. And you know, I, I have I have a theory here, but the reason that it was a particularly a bronze and serpent that they crucified there in Numbers, I think I think you know God was was crucifying that serpent way back from the garden. From the Garden of Eden. You know, it was that wily serpent that got in the way, that stole from Adam and Eve their authority, that stole blessing from them, that, 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 interve that intervened in the plan of God right there in the Garden of Eden. You know, in the Garden of Eden, God created Adam and Eve. And the very first thing he did was he gave them, um, he gave them a job and he gave them authority. Yeah. 
He gave them authority. And it was a serpent that came between them and said, you know, did God really say? And weaseled them their, their way out of their promises, made them think they didn't have something that they already had. Yeah. You know, it was the, it's, it, this is in Genesis 3, but it was, the, it was the serpent that said to Eve, if only you eat this apple, then the eyes of your understanding will be open and you'll be like God. And I hear this today in a different form in, in the church sometimes, that we, we're trying to get something we haven't already got. Right. You see, what, what Eve didn't realize was she didn't need to, to eat the apple to be like God. She already was like God. She was made in His image with His name and His power and His authority. The very first job that Adam and Eve had was to go and subdue the things of the earth. She didn't need anything else. She was perfect as she, she already was. Had it. So, she already had it. So today we pray, you know, sometimes we're guilty and often pray like, God, please do this. Or please, that, or if only I could have this. We or act have that. like we don't have the promises available to us. When they're already ours. Mm -hmm. We just need to activate them. So, you know, some, I've prayed prayers like this before I knew these truths. But I've prayed prayers, oh, please, Lord, can you do this, please? And we often put it on God, like, please, would you do this? God's already done it. He's already made those provisions for us. Praise God. So we need to start thanking God for already having it yeah. and asking God how we can activate it, give us wisdom, how to activate it and things like that. But we already have it. God's already provided right. for us. And that's, that's so powerful. That's, it's so much easy, uh, you know, it's so much easier to release something you already have than try and get something you haven't got yet. If you're trying yeah. to get something you haven't got, there's always... There's a, works involved. There's works involved. And there's always a doubt you might not get it. You might not make it to get it. And if you get it, you know, you might not get it. But no, when you're trying to get it, uh, you know, there's, there's doubt. Right. And that's why the, you know, our own thoughts or the enemy can get into you might not get it. You might not, you might not be able but to receive it. But the promises of God are yes and, and amen. amen. They're a done deal. They're a so done deal. So releasing what we already have. So when we got born again, you know, when you got born again, you received everything in Jesus. You know, you got everything, mm. praise God, on the inside of you. And, you know, I'm thinking of uh, 1 John 4, 17. As mm -hmm. he is, so are you in this world. In the, in the spirit realm, you're just like Jesus. You have everything Jesus had when he lived on earth. Yes. In your spirit. And the issue is, is we've got to release that through our soul. And our soul mm -hmm. is our mind, will, and emotions. And that's why we need to renew our mind. You know, uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 talks about renewing our mind. And when we renew our mind, all we're doing is really, is we're getting the Word of God and finding out who we really are. Yeah. You know, we look at a natural mirror, right, to find out what we look like in the flesh. So we look in the natural mirror, hopefully you look in the mirror sometimes, you know. And, to and see your outward appearance. And see, you know, and see what you look like on, the, on your outward appearance. You know, is your hair straight and things like that. Well, we need to look into the spiritual mirror. We need to look into the real mirror, which is the Word of God, to find out who we are in the Spirit. Yeah. And, and the, the Word of God powerful. reveals who we are in the Spirit. And who we are in the Spirit is all those promises of God we right. already have in the Spirit. And I love what you're saying there, that the, the Word of God paints a picture. It, it, it tells us who we are, but mm -hmm. we need to actually see it. The Word of God is that powerful. You know, the promises of God, they don't just apply to, to healing. Another, another area that people struggle with a lot that we teach, if you've, if you've watched many of our Abundant Life programs, you'll know that um, we also like to teach on how, on how to receive abundance Amen. in every yeah. area of our life. And so this is another promise that, that people often miss out on because they don't realize that, that it's provided, but we have to take possession of it by yeah. faith. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I pray that, that um, you may be in prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Yeah. You know, so you were talking about renewing your mind to the Word of God. But here, you know, in that scripture, prosperity and, and healing are put together in that God wants us to be in health yeah. and, and, to, and to prosper. But it's linked to how our soul is prospering, yeah. right? How we're thinking about the promises of God. So I know some people are sitting there thinking, well, what it would be um, a, a good scripture that I can meditate on to say the promises of God in, in the area of provision are for me. Amen. What 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 are some of, a couple of your scriptures that you really enjoy about um, that proof provision is oh, ours? Oh, so many. We just I mean, Second Corinthians eight and nine. I love this scripture because in Second Corinthians eight and nine, it says, "For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ." You know, Jesus has done everything. He's saying grace is already mm -hmm. provided for us. He became though he was rich, he became poor for our sakes. Mm -hmm. And this is a financial verse in context. He became poor for, for our sakes, so that we through his poverty, might receive his riches. Yeah. So again, it's, it's prosperity, um, increase, financial increase, mm -hmm. pro financial provision is a byproduct of the gospel. And you know, what happens is just like healing, you know, Jesus, second, um, first Peter 2, 24, Jesus took stripes and pain in his body so that we can have health and healing. Mm -hmm. Just like second Corinthians uh, 5, 17, or 5, 21, sorry, 5, 21, 
you know, he became sin so that we could become his righteousness. The great it's the great exchange. And my point being is this, is those scriptures, Jesus already done it. He's already provided for us. Grace has, has provided it. He's done the hard part. He's done all the hard part. All we have to do is believe it. And just like a marriage relationship, we started this talking about marriage relationship. When we get born again and we start putting our faith in Jesus, what happens is, is we get all those promises yep. as ours. We share his name, praise God, and we get all those promises and they become ours. And that includes mm. increasing our finances, health in our bodies, um, peace of mind, and, and righteousness, praise God. All those Deliverance. things. Deliverance. All those things. Hope, and, and, uh, joy, peace. It all became on the inside it's, of us. It's powerful. And that's, that's God's promise to us. Uh, Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. Paul says, you know, my God's going to supply your needs according to his riches. Your needs can be met according to God's riches, mm. not according to your economy. So, and so many other scriptures. So the promises of God are yes and amen. That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. The promise, no, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what we have to do. We have to walk by faith to receive these things right. and not by our natural circumstances. Mm -hmm. But the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. Yes and Regardless amen. of our circumstances, they are yes and amen. Praise so the God. promises of God are for us, but we need to be aware of what they are and how to receive them. So we're going to continue this series of mm. possessing our promises. We've presented to you today just a few of the benefits of being born again in a, in a marriage type relationship with Jesus. Right now, we'd love to pray with you and help you to receive some of those promises and remember to carry on watching the rest of this series. Amen. Father God, I thank Give you so hand. much. <laughs> thank you so much for everyone watching and listening today. I thank you, Father God, that they are blessed. I thank you, Lord, that every promise that you've made is available to them. They have it. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they can trust in you. They can trust in your word. And I thank you, Lord, as they take those steps of faith, they're going to see those promises manifest in their life. And they're going to see the full benefits that you've already paid for. Praise God. Lord, I thank you. You love every single viewer. And I thank you that every single viewer is receiving from you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Praise God. Thanks for joining us today. We'll be back real soon. And until next time, remember, don't just live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life. We'll see you next time. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website, teradesministries.com or call us at 719-600-3344. Thanks for joining us at today's program. We've been talking today about how God is faithful to keep His Word. You know, he, His Word is powerful. He created the whole world. He created you and me with the power of His Word. And He sent His Word to heal you and to prosper you, to deliver you. And we must. our part is to forget not all of His benefits of His Word. Amen. His Word does not return to Him void. So we want you to get everything, obtain all of the promises that God has for you. Stay tuned and remember to watch the rest of the series. To order your copy of this teaching, visit our website or call us at 719-600-3344. Coming up next on the Abundant Life program. I started dreaming. I started imagining myself climbing that mountain, getting up out that wheelchair and walking and climbing that mountain in, in three months time. I started seeing myself do it, kind of like with, with Abraham and Sarah. Every time you know, I, I, I closed my eyes, I could see myself doing it. And one day, the Lord um, spoke to me and he says, you don't have to believe for everything in one go. You know, my promises are yes and amen, but you don't have to believe for everything in one go.